So uh, thank you. Uh, we're doing another big jump, I guess. We're coming from pig back to the human again. But we share two things. The first thing is we believe this is innovation. And the second thing is we believe there's a big chance that it's going to change the, the general practice for some way. Um, we're very happy at our institution because we could develop and also go into trials with a couple of different devices and gimmicks that have been developed for reflux disease over the last years. And I will just go through some slides to um, show you why we believe this um, is worth it, looking at it and maybe worth bringing into trials and maybe bringing it into the daily um, practice. This is my disclosures. Um, what we know today, and everybody who's in the topic, we know that if we talk about anti-reflux treatment, we know we talk about anti-reflux barrier, and there's three very, very important parts of the anti-reflux barrier you have to treat. It's the hiatus, it's the flat valve, as we call it, and for sure it's the LES. Everybody was running after for the uh, fast for the last um, 10 years. And there is a new device. It's a small medical grade silicon, non-active device, five segments, it's held together with a non-absorbable suture and it does three things. And the, one, the first uh, part, it realigns the gastric fundus and the distal esophagus, it recreates the so-called gastric flat valve. And at the end, and this is I guess the most important part this, re this device really does, um, it prevents protrusion of the LES uh, into the chest cavity. So if we go through the procedure, you will see there are six very important steps for it. The first one is hiatal dissection. Everybody who's in the topic will see that it seems to be very important to get a lot of the esophagus into the abdomen. The second step is then to do the crural repair, which repairs the first or the first very important step of hiatal hernia repair. Then you do fundal mobilization, and then you do a pexation of the stomach to the esophagus. Um, and there's a special technique for this, meaning that you want to really create like a 90 degrees fundal pexation on the patient's left side, um, being aware of not touching the vagal nerves there. And then, and this is the specific step to the reflux um, procedure, reflux stop procedure itself, is you create something like a fundic pouch, and then you implant and you uh, develop, deploy the, the device into this. It seems to be very important how the device itself is uh, deployed. It has to be quite up to really achieve what we are looking for to interrupt abdominalize the LES quite far. So if you have a look at this, you will see that all the three critical steps that are important for anti-reflux surgery, as we believe today, are fulfilled by this device. And what we believe today that the device really fields to a stabilization of this situation, preventing um, the LES going back into the uh, chest. So what is there for data? There is in the so-called so CA approval study, and everybody who's in data post-op outcome with reflux will know that this data is quite impressive. So you will see um, there is um, a 98% um, of um, pH metry improvement, meaning this is an objective parameter, and the same for PPI freeness after uh, surgery. This is quite uh, impressive, and especially if you go for a new device, we'll see uh, you need a very good safety um, safety numbers, and you'll see there is no device-related um, SEAs within the first year, and dysphagia rates down to 2%. Everybody who's in the reflux uh, field knows this is very good numbers. There is three and four years uh, update. It's unpublished, and this is numbers provided by the company, and you'll see it really keeps stable. So, and very important, especially the device-related uh, SEAs don't increase at all over four years. This was something you always have to think of if you plant new devices into patients. There's two special topics dealt with. The first one is in patients with uh, big hiatal hernias. You'll see the results are almost the same in those patients, so you can also do this with big hiatal hernias. You'll also not increase um, the postoperative um, complication rates, and there is a second patient group if you treat reflux that is quite complicated, and this is patients with uh, motility disorders, and you see very fast here that it's the same results here. Most important thing is there is more coming. There is a lot of head-to-head -head comparatives, which is very important, and the second thing, and this is, I think, the most important, the company is spending a lot of uh, energy and, I guess, also a lot of money for setting up some RCTs to really go um, for reflux stop coming into the um, into the um, comparison to traditional fundification techniques. So my conclusion would be that um, I believe the reflux stop at the moment is jumping from emerging technology to maybe real life. There is more than 750 implants only in Europe uh, to date. Um, it seems to be very safe, efficient, 
at least in the short term, and maybe also in the so-called difficult to treat patient. And um, for sure, we need long-term prospective randomized and comparative uh, data, which most certainly is uh, on the way. Thank you. And this is Vienna. So if you come there once, you can choose having beautiful Vienna or having the hospital where I work. Thank you very much.